I think it's important for people to realize that um, uh, the Ogallala Sioux uh, ha have laid claim for a long time on the Black Hills. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Uh, and I'm, the not, reason, I'm not an expert yeah, on, on, uh, on this The reason I bring that up is, yeah. is that I think that a lot of times people say, but I don't want to give nor do I want to worry about people who don't seem to be contributing a lot. But I think it's important to realize that um, the Ogallala Sioux Nation owned basically their original tribal grounds, included the Black Hills and the Homestead gold mine, one of the richest gold mines, most profitable gold mines ever in the world, ever. And they didn't get to have any of those profits. Mm -hmm. And they were moved over into a very desolate area that is close to the Black Badlands, includes mm -hmm. a lot of the Badlands, which has a, uh, a landscape that would look like you're on the moon. It's very beautiful to go beautiful, visit, yeah, but it's yeah. not a place where you do a lot of farming or ranching. And um, so I think it's important to realize that the reason why we have as a nation an obligation to uh, our uh, uh, forebearers, our Indian forebearers and, uh, and original owners of this country is because a lot has been taken away and that uh, uh, a lot, uh, what has been in its place is a huge amount of poverty. And yeah. now we have this little town called White Clay, 14 people there essentially going and selling beer and, and other uh, intoxicants to a desperately poor uh, nation whose uh, basic human needs are not being met. Yeah, that, that's true. I, 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 there's a, a long history uh, of the kind of exploitation and the theft, uh, always done with, a, with a, a veneer of legality, whether it's treaties or, or, or that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, basic theft of, of not just property, uh, as we would look at it, but rights and, and human dignity and culture. I mean, it was against the law for uh, Native Americans to practice their religion mm -hmm. uh, in a land uh, of the free and the home of the brave uh, with freedom of religion uh, being guaranteed to us by the Constitution it was denied uh, and punished among uh, Native peoples in this country uh, well into the 20th century. Um, the, I think that an important point to be made though is that this exploitation and abuse uh, and ethnic cleansing, if you will. I mean, ethnic cleansing is, is used to, uh, to describe events uh, today where a population, uh, a group of people, uh, a nation are forcibly moved off of where they've lived for centuries onto some other ghettoized type of place. Obviously, that's what we did in this country to native peoples. Um, but it's not just history. Um, it goes on today. Uh, I mean, I talk to a lot of people who, who might say, yeah, we did bad things to uh, the original inhabitants of, of this state, this country. We did bad things, but that's history. They've got to get over it and move forward. Well, the reality is we're continuing to do these things, maybe a little bit differently, maybe approaching things in a, in a little bit different way, but the kind of uh, abuse and oppression and uh, exclusion from economic progress is very much alive and well. And white clay is, is an example not only of, of neglect by state officials and state law enforcement, uh, state regulators, the regulators of alcohol licenses, uh, but it's exploitation. I, it's uh, Native peoples are, are well aware of, of the, for whatever reasons, uh, and there are a number of explanations, genetic, mm -hmm. uh, biological, cultural, social, 
for uh, pov you know, and, and, the, and the poverty and oppression that, that creates uh, the alcohol, alcoholism problem in Native communities. Whatever the reason, it, it, Native peoples are very much aware of, of the se severity of that problem in their communities, whether it's at a reservation or in a, in a, in a, in a city like uh, Omaha or Sioux City or Rapid City. And uh, to hide, as the state of Nebraska does, under the mantle of freedom and liberty for business owners and the sanctity of alcohol, which is alcohol good, uh, meth bad. Uh, you can have all the laws and attack meth, uh, but you have to be really careful with kid gloves when you deal with alcohol. Uh, because, yeah, maybe it's true that alcohol costs far more in terms of destruction of, of families, economic damage to uh, communities uh, all across this country. I mean, alcohol causes more deaths than all the Ill other illegal drugs in this country combined. Um, yet alcohol is legal now. It makes a lot of money for a lot of people all the way up and down the distribution chain from brewers and distillers uh, through distributors down to merchants that it becomes, uh, I think our state senators become blinded to the reality that alcohol is, is a very, very severe problem for people on the Pine Ridge and white clay is the fix, it's the supply that, uh, I mean, there are other places where this alcohol uh, enters. And of course, people will seek alcohol, but, but it's right there, it's, it's made available. It's, it's as though uh, uh, you have a family member uh, who is, is dealing with alcohol dependency or drug dependency, and right there in your refrigerator and in your medicine chest, uh, and maybe, maybe even put a, a, a little cooler in their bedroom and stock it with uh, the, the drug, alcohol, or whatever that is uh, plaguing them. Mm -hmm. how, how can we expect healing and, and uh, growth to come from that? I think ultimately uh, the white clay is impinging upon the sovereignty and decision-making powers of the Pine Ridge uh, nation. And, and um, so it's make, making it very difficult to respond to serious issues that they recognize in their own community. Mm -hmm. Mark, I really want to thank you for doing this film, The Battle of White Clay, and coming and speaking with us today. Um, I'm sure everybody is going to be interested in seeing this film. Right now you can go to the Ross Film Theater Will there be other opportunities to see the film? Yeah, probably by the time this airs, it will be over. It'll be playing until February 5th at the okay. Ross. Uh, but there'll be m many other opportunities, okay. certainly. So. Great. Well, thank you again Thanks. for doing this. And we are the Watchful Citizen, the Lancaster County Democrats. We meet every uh, third Tuesday. Um, in the evening at 7 p.m. at uh, Communication Workers of America Union Hall at 25th and N Street. Thank you for joining us today.